Address as the agenda item comes up. That's the agenda item that comes up. Okay. okay, whichever your preference is. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call anyway. Generally, um, I understand that you'd like to take things in the order of the agenda. So. Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item, please. Anyone else from the public? Uh, would anyone else from the public like to address the uh, city council? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion to approve and a second by a multitude. With, with the. With the yes, sir. And Mr. Ralph Buddy, excuse me. Councilman Buddy. Councilman Buddy. Hold the council, please. Miller. Here. that we have a member representing uh, our community and uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm glad to 
but it, it won't to Miller. He's uh, someone that's very well versed in, in uh, our city and, and, uh, and I think an excellent choice for him to continue on, on, the, uh, on the board there. Sir? Thank you. you Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it is an interesting uh, committee. But necessary. Thank you. I appreciate your trust. Yes, sir. You have my full endorsement. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, further discussion from any council members? Okay. Next agenda item, please. Okay. Item number seven. This is a public hearing. On the second reading of ordinance number 0272, amendment number two, and ordinance amending ordinance number 0272 of the Town of Alaska City, adopting the municipal budget for the 2021-2022 fiscal year to allow for the budgeting and expenditure of funds for the purchase of software and related equipment for timekeeping slash scheduling, budgeting, contract slash bidding management and security, and providing for refill and severability clauses. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Pat Bentley, Finance Director. Uh, this uh, amendment that we're proposing is to cover uh, expenditures for software that uh, we find that we need, but we were not in a, in a position to include it in our original budget. Um, the software will uh, enhance our work, our ability to do our work, and uh, also make some things um, uh, more presentable to the, to the public. And the funds are coming from the funds are coming from uh, our, our reserve funds. Uh, we have had uh, uh, very good excesses in the last two, the last two uh, budget season, the last two fiscal years and uh, various amendments that we have done have chosen to use those excesses for, um, ex for to cover these expenditures. Thank you, Ms. Rambo. Would anyone from the public like to address uh, this agenda item? Okay, if anyone wants to address the council, I'll close the public here. Is a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. Mr. Mayor, may I just comment? I just wanted to say that I clarified in the um, caption and in the recital and added document management so that it corresponded with the exhibit. That's the only change. I just clarified what the funds are be, how the funds will be spent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For I just want to make sure. Does your motion still hold? Here. Yeah. And second? Second. Hold the council, please. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Pensaria? Aye. 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 Okay, item number nine. This is a discussion and action. Uh, this is on a resolution that the mayor be authorized to find a software, there's a typo, uh, service agreement between the Town of Horizon City and Tyler Technologies Incorporated. Aaron Will again, Mayor Council. Uh, this software is one of the ones that we just did the amendment for. Uh, it is a uh, timekeeping uh, scheduling uh, software that will uh, work along with our existing financial software and it will greatly, greatly, once it's installed, <laughs> greatly improve uh, the payroll process. Yeah. And this is one uh, program that I use a lot to approve uh, time cards and things like that. It's, it's uh, very convenient. Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Alderman Miller. Are there any further discussions from the council? Not for the council, please. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Benzeria? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Benzeria. Item number 10, this is a public hearing on the second reading of an ordinance vacating a 2.416 acre portion of the city right of way known as LTV Road, located within a portion of Lee Park Survey, number 297, <coughs> City, from Paso County, Texas, providing for retailer and severability clauses. Good evening, Mayor 
Mary, Tom Coleman, Sean Buddy, a Brian Pritchard, can you all hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Give me the battery stuff. This is the second reading of the vacation ordinance for a portion of LTV Road. Uh, council may recall. Zoning Commission recommended approval. We brought it to Council, and Council uh, approved the application, so we moved forward with drafting the ordinance. However, we found out that the county owned the area in Fee Simple, and so we had to work with them to acquire the property. We're still working with them. Uh, Council approved a purchase agreement at their last meeting, and so we're uh, waiting to get the executed copy from the county to uh, close on the property. So. Staff is recommending approval of this vacation. However, it's subject to the closing on the purchase of that property. And so again, it's uh, uh, just over 2.4 acres in size. The area around it has since been developed. The reason for the, the realignment of the roadway is to conform with the city's major thoroughfare plan. This is the area in question. So you can see that orange east-west line here, that is Claret Cup now. And the developer has provided a north-south connection, which remains LTV Road. And council provided that direction to limit any issues for the uh, property owner to the south, uh, so that no address changes would have to be done. They will maintain their address on LTV Road. This is the notification map. By law, we have to send notices to everyone who owns property within 200 feet of the subject property. Now, at the, when you sent the notices for the original public hearing at planning and zoning, the parcel layer had not been updated because it hadn't been platted yet. And so we just did our best um, estimate as to who we needed to notify and that included the property to the south. Now that the parcel layer has been redrawn because the areas have been platted, it's no longer included in that area because it's not within 200 feet. However, because the property owner was notified originally, we went ahead and extended a notification to that property owner for tonight's uh, public hearing. This is the location map of the overall development, Rancho de Cierto Bayo Unit 13. This is just a zoomed in a portion of the plat to show the original delineation of the road and then the new roadways that have since been constructed. This is uh, both phases of Unit 13. Uh, the next item on the agenda is Phase 2 of the development, the recording plan. And so if Council allows, I'll go ahead and discuss that briefly. This is the aerial of uh, Rancho de Cerco Bayo Unit 13, Phase 2, location map, and the recording plat. And the reason that I wanted to um, discuss this with that item is because there was condition on this plot, on the final plot, that it could not get recorded until, until the vacation of LTV Road was finalized. Since we're still pending the closing on the property, this would also be subject to uh, that closing. And uh, with that, it is a public hearing for the second reading, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions after that. From the public, like to address this agenda item, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Michael Egan. I am the property owner of the address located at 1 LTV Road. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing me to very briefly address you. Um, as you may be aware, LTV Road served as the dedicated access to the facilities located at 1 LTV Road for over 30 years. And not only as physical access, but a certain type of access. And I object to any vacation or realignment of LTV Road 
and in doing so, I consider that a taking. That's all my comments. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Would anyone else from the public like to address this agenda? <coughs> if not, I'll close the public hearing. Okay. Yes. <coughs> okay. Yes, please. My name is James Davis, and I live at 14115 Goose Flower. <coughs> First of all, I want to say I'm not here to comment on no one else but my property. I'm not concerned about what else in the horizon or nothing else. I'm not concerned about my property. I want to put a open air carport in my driveway because that gives extra cars to take care of my daughter when they come down to help me keep my property up. Okay. You, you want a, a, about a carport, right? A carport? Yes, sir. That, that's further in, in, the, in the agenda. It's number 18, sir. Further in the agenda? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, we'll put that on. We'll be all right. Uh, will anyone, anyone else from the public like to address, address this agenda? <coughs> okay, I'll close the public hearing. Item number 11. This is the discussion and action portion of this same item as previously read. We've, we've discussed this often in this council, and I, you know, we've never, it's the first time we've heard of an objection, um, but we're, we're in the process, so. Um. Well, there was an objection at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, and I believe that the initial um, application action that the, the council took back in March of 2020, uh, Mr. Egan expressed the same concerns. However, um, in order to address some of the concerns uh, given the traffic, the type of, of traffic that's coming in about and, and out of that property, the developer oversized or built a larger roadway than is required on what is the new LTD road. Uh, typically, a residential street is 52 feet wide and they provided a 64 foot wide roadway. Uh, they even widened the radii at the intersection of LTV and Claret Cup to allow for those larger trucks to make those turns more easily. Um, so there have been some accommodations made. And again, the location of the area in question is um, <clears throat> farther than 200 feet away from the nearest property line to Mr. Egan's property. The roadways have been constructed, dedicated, and accepted by the city. So they are public roadways. And of course, this is all complete. I mean, those, roadways, okay. those new roadways are already complete. Yes, sir. Which are all initial conditions to be here. Exactly. That road was going to be wide. <laughs> Two to come into that to accommodate the uh, large uh, trucks. Yeah. Um, is, is there a question? I guess I'm just trying to better understand. Um, could you refresh my memory on what, what the reason why we were having the, vaca the vacation of that property? Sure, it was because the, the developer was trying to meet the city's major thoroughfare plan. So originally, again, that roadway came off of Darrington and Curve South. However, the MTP calls for an east-west minor arterial. And so in order to do that, they had to make a 90 degree intersection, essentially. So they vacated that, or requested to vacate that portion that curves down. To the south. So we're requesting the developer to vacate, not, not Mr. Egan? No, the developer has requested to vacate that portion because they've He's dedicated to be correct, they dedicated and approved other roadways to accommodate <coughs> that. Who purchases that? We think the city has to purchase it from the county, which is an unusual circumstance. Typically, roadways are not owned by, it's, it's, they're owned by the abutting property owners. In this case, the county owned the underlying fee. And so, we cannot vacate something that we do not own in fee or by easement. Um, so we had to vacate, or I'm sorry, acquire that from the county in order to vacate it to the developer. We're still working through that. Okay. Is there a, a motion on the board? I'll just, I'll just, discussion. Yes. I'd like to hear a legal comment on 
on this is something that we followed the procedures that we needed to. And uh, I heard I heard Mr. Egan say that that uh, he considers this a taking. So I'm just, just would like a comment on that. Sure. Alderman um, Miller and other council members, because there will be access provided, there is not a taking, and that. Um, road has been constructed. In fact, um, what I'm hearing is that it exceeds what it would have been there, so there is no taking at this point. And in fact, council needs to follow its um, comprehensive plans for streets, and I believe that's exactly what they're doing, and requiring the developer to correspond with all, or to comply with all the corresponding codes. So um, I believe that we're in good like to uh, have everybody go to quick claim D on that item 11, please. The comment statement. Okay, on the very bottom. Um, it says after the recording, return to the name of the person there is John Duran, RKM Land Partners LLC. Just to, for the record, uh, that's not me. <laughs> I, never, I was reading all of this and I've never worked for RKM Land Partners, just for the record, and that is not me. So glad somebody has a great name like that out there. Thank you. That's all I Thank wanted. you for your clarification. Thank you. Is there a motion on the floor? Please be free. There's a motion to approve. Second. There's a second. And a second. <coughs> if there are no further questions, please call the council. Miller. Aye. Piros. Aye. Ortega? Aye. 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 Correct. Name. Carries. Okay, item number 12, discussion and action. Uh, this is on a recording plan application and authorizing the mayor to sign the recording plan for Rancho Desierto Bello, unit number 13, phase 2, SUB 0024782021, legally described as a portion of Lee Cross Serving number 297, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, application submitted by Train Associates, LLC. Again, Council, this is the recording plat and it will be subject to the closing on the property for the LTV road vacation and the, fi the finalization of the vacation request. Uh, in addition to that, the developer has provided both maintenance bonds that were referenced in the memo to Council. Thank you. Is there a motion? There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? second. And a second for all of them. Call the council. If there's no further questions or comments, call the council, please. Miller? Aye. Piros? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Cantería? Aye. Duran? Aye. Correct. Abstention. And the motion carries. Item number 13. This is a discussion item. This is the first reading of an ordinance uh, adopting a zoning change within the municipal limits of the town of Horizon City, Texas, rezoning one parcel from PUD to C1 containing approximately 8.69 acres, being a portion of Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad Company Surveys, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, south of, south of the intersection of Canazo Avenue and East Lake Boulevard, and authorizing the location of the change on the official zoning map of the city, providing for the following findings of fact, repealer severability, and proper notice and hearing. Mayor and Council, I, I would like to present the next four items together. The first two are first readings, and so we plan to bring those back to Council for the second reading and public hearing in February. Um, the two zone, rezoning requests are for properties on either side of Horizon Middle School and Desert Hills Elementary. They're both currently zoned PUD, Planned Unit Development. The original request was to rezone them to C2 commercial. However, the staff presented a recommendation to the Planning and Zoning Commission to recommend a C1 zone. It's a more <coughs> commercial uses that are allowed. And given their proximity to the school, we thought that was a more appropriate zone and the Planning and Zoning Commission agreed with staff. The applicant's representative um, stated that the applicant was in agreement with that as well. And so what we're presenting to council tonight is a recommendation to change it to a C1 zone. This is the city's uh, future land use map. It does call for medium to high density residential. However, this is along Canazo, it's on the frontage. 
and is consistent with the surrounding land uses um, and the, the changing commercial corridor along that roadway. This is the aerial of Canazo Estates Unit 1, which is parcel 2 on the rezoning. This is the location map, the survey for the rezoning request, and you can see that they've updated that zone to C1. And the revised plan that we received this afternoon, um, it does meet all of staff's comments. We are recommending approval of the preliminary plat for this unit. I just wanted to emphasize this area because the applicant again is required to comply with a major thoroughfare plan. In order to do so, they have to dedicate additional right of way on Glen Warner. And so they're dedicating and improving approximately 3,000 square feet of right of way in this area. Canazo States Unit 2, here's the uh, location map and the survey and the revised plat. Again, to meet the MTP, they're dedicating right of way to extend Rodman across this property uh, at 64 feet wide. There was one um, oversight here. The lot and block numbers were at some one point removed and so they will need to be added back in. So that is a condition uh, that staff is recommending on the approval of, of this plat that they add those lot, lot and block numbers. These are the new cross sections. So again, they're proposing that top cross section, which does meet the city's minimum requirement, which is in the center. Mm -hmm. And then along Canazo, we have an existing 120 feet foot right of way, so no additional right of way or improvements are required on Canazo. And again, uh, staff is recommending approval of both preliminary plats for units one and two. Unit two with the condition that the lot and block numbers uh, be included. And then the second reading will come back next month. Approximately 4.444 acres, 44 acres, uh, being a portion of thir Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad Company Surveys, Town of Horizon City of Pasadena, Texas, north of the intersection of Canazo Avenue and Horizon Boulevard, and authorizing the location of the change on the official zoning map of the city and providing for the following findings of fact, repealer, severability, and proper notice and hearing. Item number 15, this is a discussion action, discussion and action uh, item uh, on a preliminary plan application FUB 002489-2021 for Canazo Estates Unit 1, uh, a property legally described as being Track 8, Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad Surveys, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, containing 4.944 acres, plus or minus application submitted by Conde Incorporated. We're gonna go through. Huh? This is the first section I did. Okay. Ever did presented it. Right. Um, is there uh, any uh, questions or comments about okay. this? Huh? What we're doing here is changing from uh, from PUD to C1. Right. right. And PUD does not work for the plan. Right. They're, they're doing. They're proposing to do more traditional commercial restaurants and things like that retail. In the combined residential development. But tonight, the only action that's being um, requested is on the plats. Is there a motion on the plot? For I will move to approve that. There's a motion to bribe number 15. Is there a second? And a second. Call the council, please. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Renteria? Aye. Duran? Aye. Corral? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 16, also discussion and action. This is on a preliminary flight application SUB 002490-2021 for Canazo Estates Unit 2, a property legally described as being Track 9, Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad, Railroad Cut Surveys, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, containing 8.695 acres plus or minus. Application submitted by Conde Incorporated. And again, the staff recommendation is approval with the condition that the lot and block numbers being included on the base of the plan. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Jim. There's a motion to approve and a second. Are there any further questions or comments from the council? Second. Holy Council, please. Aye. This is a preliminary and final plat for Horizon Town Center Unit 4 residential subdivision. The zoning map has not yet been updated. It was, this area was recently rezoned, and so I'm just including the zoning map that was approved with that rezoning request. It's the area that is zoned R2, and then the ponding area, which is this rectangular area just north of the development here, which is technically zone C2 commercial. This is the aerial. And the location map. Could you back, back up? Sure. Okay. Just trying to orient myself. Oh, sorry. Yes, the Walmart is just to the east right. of this development, and Idea School is across the, the street there. Just going the wrong way. This is the preliminary plat. So, what has changed since the, the first preliminary plat was submitted is the configuration of the pond. Uh, that zoning plan showed it. Um, in a different configuration and they've since changed that and that's fine that they've shown it on both preliminary and the final plan. Uh, they are proposing to dedicate that to the city for maintenance. They're proposing uh, 39 lots in this subdivision. And these, this is the cross section that they're using for the residential roadways, which does meet the city's minimum requirements. The issue with the pond is that typically the city engineer uh, recommends that the city except ponds that serve both commercial and residential development only when the amount of wa uh, residential water is 50% or more that's entering that pond. In this case, at full build out, it will be uh, significantly more commercial water that's entering that pond. So we are working with the developer on a, an agreement that um, will likely include a, a payment of, fee of maintenance fees up front to the city. Uh, for that pond, and it's about an 80-20 split, so 80% commercial water versus 20% residential. So we are discussing that with the developer and our legal team, and we anticipate that we'll have something for council, um, hopefully when the next uh, commercial subdivision comes, comes to council. It's getting ready to go to planning and zoning next week. And so with that, uh, staff does recommend approval of this plat. It does mean all of the zoning requirements. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion to approve. A motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. If there are no further questions or comments from the council, please call the council. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Mr. Davis mentioned uh, staff gets requests for carports quite often. Um, our code does not typically allow for them. Um, most of the time it's in the, the um, it's a, a canopy that's being requested. In, in Mr. Davis's case, it's a built structure. Um, not quite like this, but it is a, a more sustainable structure that they're proposing. And so because we continue to get these requests, staff, um, and I talked uh, to Mayor Mendoza about this. We thought it was a good idea to bring it to council to get some direction before we go through that effort of drafting an amendment, taking it to planning and zoning, uh, reaching out to the utility companies, to emergency services district number one, um, and then bringing it forward to council. And so um, what staff envisions for carports is something like what's in front of you here something that's built in the same manner or something similar to the main structure uh, and that maintains the side setback and an appropriate <coughs> distance from the front property line uh, throughout. This is another example of one. You can see that side setback is maintained and it, it looks like the home. What we want to 
what we don't want to allow or what we want to discourage is this type of structure can tend to deteriorate much faster, which could be um, a liability issue or just an aesthetics issue or something like this that doesn't look like the home. These are some structures that we've seen around Horizon that we're working through code enforcement on. Um, so we'll look at both structures in the front yard and structures in the side yards when allowed. You have some lots that have really wide side yards that can accommodate a structure and still meet the side setback. Um, however, we have people that are building them up to the property line or up to the rock wall. The importance of a side setback is for proper separation between homes. So if one were to catch fire, it doesn't jump as quickly to the next structure. It also provides EMS the space to get to the rear of the home if necessary. And so that's why I mentioned uh, coordinating with, with ESD1 because that's always um, a concern of the fire marshal. So we want to make sure that we're coordinating any changes with him as well. Another similar structure in the side yard that is not allowed today and we would not recommend to council to continue to allow. Um, this is one, it's a canopy, and two, it's, it covers the entire site setback. And so, again, right now we're working with code enforcement on these illegal structures, and then um, we would like to come back to council in the future if you all agree tonight um, with some standards that, that we can implement. I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, Mr. I've, Davis I've, would I've like to I've, uh, I've driven out around town and I see a lot of carports that uh, <clears throat> some, uh, most of them, <laughs> uh, I just don't like, you know. I mean, uh, we're, uh, and, and, and you know, there's a fine line between uh, allowing property owners to have that liberty because it's your property, right? But you know, but uh, when you live in an incorporated community, you understand that there's rules and there's limitations to what you can do. I can't raise hogs and in, 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 you know at my house. I'd like to. You can do. Yeah. You can too. Yeah. You can too. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> but uh, you can do that in the county, I reckon, or or take you know like these examples that we've seen. But uh, I think we need to uh, get this under control, and uh, before and some of it looks unsightly, to be very frank. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would you like to address the council, sir? Yes, sir. Please. <laughs> That was a good game the other night, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I'm, I've been living here in Wyden for like 13 years. And I'm 100% veteran also. And uh, now uh, my daughters have to come down sometimes, kind of hit me with my property. And they need transportation when they come down here. So I had to buy an extra car for this driving. But I need to put a carport in front of my garage so I can check my cars. And uh, I brought my wife with me, my contractor with me, to explain to you the question I can't answer. They can't. And I don't hear she will, so she can't answer too. But this is what it's all about. I want to get a carport. Somewhere put it in front of my garage. So, you know, but you tell me how I can get one to put there. What procedures can I do? I hate to put it up and then get fined. <laughs> or you come to me tear it down. Because I want to kind of get a little bit of what I'm doing. And I need this from you all, and I really need it bad. So, anything else I should tell you about? Yes, sir, please. Um, I'm Rich Ramirez from Ramirez and Son. Uh, uh, Mr. Davis is a civil veteran, so he was talking about coming. He was talking about coming out of his garage and needing protection, you know, from, from the weather. I understand what he's saying. I understand exactly because we've worked in Albuquerque for many years. Um, what the city is saying, so a structure that that's similar to the existing home. I mean, is that allowed here? My, my work has been done in Mexico, so Texas is. No well, Michelle, can you? Yeah. Currently, it's, it's not allowed, and that's why we're asking the council if they want us to move we forward. We need to uh, 
take some course of action. Uh, it, it's going to be a process. So I mean, if you wow. say, "Yeah, go ahead," I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But we have to follow ordinance and, and uh, those things. Uh, but I, I think there's we we can. Uh, I'd like to direct our staff to see what they can do in in, um, in in order to, and we'll give them guidance in, as to see where we stand on this. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of uh, the picture I saw yeah. with the structure with a similar, uh, yeah. that, that's very nice. Yes. And can you back that one up, and believe? Uh, sure. One more. Yeah, yeah that, that, see, uh, that looks very those, attractive. Those are currently not allowable? Correct. These are pictures from the city of El Paso. Well, there's some here too. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I see it's all up. This looks very attractive. So I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I think she would like to yes, ma'am. I'm Richard Davis, his wife. Excuse me, please. Uh, we see these pictures from the other. It's more a canopy, it's not a cardboard. It's a roof in front of the garage that we protect our other cars but cannot go in the garage. And this is not allowed. My question is what I saw here. We see it all around our neighborhood. They have it. Why they can have it and why this veteran, 25 years military, why, he, why we cannot have it? Then the others have it all around. And in El Paso they have everything. In, in city and uh, it, it's the same thing. People close off their garages and without uh, getting a permit and things like that. And there's, you know, we, we deal with these issues all the time. People just put them up. You know, it's their property. They do what they want. It's a lot of that attitude persists. Um, but the, you know, we live in a community with ordinances and, and things like that. I, and uh, I understand people put them up um, and. Uh, we're gonna have to get this under control. But uh, we're gonna uh, pursue some uh, course of action with uh, our staff and, and we'll come up with uh, um, something that, that's, uh, that, that we can all live with and, and be in, in compliance with the ordinance. And it, it may take a change to the ordinance. We'll, uh, we'll see. And, and so, but, but I'll direct the staff to give us some some uh, ideas and we'll work together and come up with a a solution i believe that that makes everybody happy yeah, yeah. that okay. would be nice when we can be happy i say it again i i don't make pictures from the neighborhood because i know you can see it everywhere why they can do why we cannot do it i mean that's the rules in, in horizon but we have to get a solution and beside our house, it's not, we have the cypress, we have their pond, I mean, that, and it's too tight, yeah? Mm -hmm. We can only one car, but we need a, this, this uh, canopy for two cars, directly in front of the garage. And here he helped us, the constructor, we got him known, and uh, he made uh, all this uh, architecture stuff. It's very nice, and it looks good. I mean, it's not that it, it makes uh, the, the neighborhood bad. Whoops, are bad. <laughs> bad, yeah. But um, well, I'll direct the staff and uh, we'll uh, come up with a viable solution uh, that, that works for all Yeah, that could be better. very, very nice. And, and keeps up the. Uh, the uh, well, as I said at first, thank you. Thank you. I'm not here I'm to complain on my neighbors. <laughs> I'm not here <laughs> to say, well, he, your wife, and I. I have good neighbors. I have good people I know here. And I'm not here to do this. What I'm here to find out is what I can do on my property. Yes, what someone else has done on their property is not my problem. My problem is what I can do on my property and remain within the law, you know, and that I can, uh, that's my interest. All of his property is not mine. I don't want Nobody thinking that I'm coming here complaining about this man, that man. Not my thing. Thank you for coming out and doing it the right way. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you for coming out and doing it the right way. Appreciate it. I won't put it up. <laughs>
to, to answer Ms. Davis' question, Davis's question, a lot of many, I would say all of the structures are built without permits and are done, you know, on the weekends when staff is not here. So, um, it, and it makes it really difficult from a code enforcement perspective to, to address them. But we are working with legal, uh, with the judge to, to see how we can best address these illegal structures. So um, it is posted as a discussion and action item, so staff is requesting direction from council. So I would move that we direct staff to come up with a solution yes, to this issue. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. Tell them about that seal that we need to get out. And we'll now, uh, and, and uh, we'll work uh, together, we'll like I say, with the assumption that we can all live with, you know, because we really, we need, we need to, ago we went through the uh, recognition process and uh, it's four years now and every four years you have to have an on-site uh, visit uh, reinspection reevaluation uh, and also you have to have a contract which that's what this is it just says that we need, we're going to proceed with that situation so I do ask that you would allow the mayor to uh, to enter into this agreement so that we can continue on with uh, recognize status. Just, uh, yes, sir. Just as a question, and not a negative question, but just one for information. How does this get us better insurance rates? What What are the benefits to say John Q. Public for yeah, the reduction? Uh, a reduction in uh, liability uh, because we use best practice policies that are uh, that have been reviewed statewide by many attorneys uh different cities um not only that with new laws that, that have come forward uh, every year uh, both federal mandates and state uh, laws uh, we are oftentimes required to meet those requirements and um, and so as long as we uh, stay accredited or recognized uh, we continue to use uh, the most recent best practices and policies that are reviewed, uh, you know, legally reviewed. And so it's a reduction in liability from the best practice. I'll second your motion. Uh, if there are no further questions or comments, please. Uh, I do want to say, uh, uh, before we go to the Holy Council, um, that uh, thank you. You, you may not police for so much, but thank you. And I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Call the council, please. Miller? Aye. 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 Aye.
Do you work for the city, sir? Uh, what is your title? Uh, IT. IT. What's your name? Josue. I'm sorry. Josue. Josue? Okay. Thank you. Is there uh, more than one person in the IT department?
mean, if it's not running, then it's going to close tomorrow. We were going to tow it to the house and burn it until we were able to get it back. Yeah, we're, we're coming.